Welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the movies. Let's go see Steve. Shorty! Happy Halloween. Tired Old Queen at the movies. <laughs> Johnny! I want to do something really scary for Halloween. So I chose Robert Wise's The Haunting from 1963, which I think is the scariest haunted house movie ever, ever, ever. Essentially, the story is this. A doctor gets people who have had paranormal activities, strange things happen in their past, and asks them to come and stay in this house. This house, Hill House, has a bad history. Countless people for generations have died in this house in one way or another. And the woman who owns the house says to the doctor, no one who ever went to Hill House ever stayed more than a few days. The dead are not quiet in Hill House. And Julie Harris plays this woman who has been repressed all of her life. She had a very strange thing, which I'm not going to tell you about. I'll let you find that out in the film that happened to her when she was young. She's in, been in denial about it ever since, but that's why she's been invited. She took care of her invalid mother who just died. She lives with her sister and her family, and they're, they make her miserable. And she's on the verge always of having a nervous breakdown, which makes her twice as susceptible to paranormal activity in this house. I'm like a small creature swallowed whole by a monster. And the monster feels my tiny movements inside. Also on this visit is Claire Bloom, who is a lesbian. And they put her in this Mary Quant wardrobe. Mary Quant was this radical sort of designer. In the, and she's very, very severe and very, very um, sort of witty and caustic. I'm right next door. We have a connecting bath. This one used to be the embalming room, I bet. And her whole thing is that she can read people's minds. So she constantly is telling Julie Harris what she's thinking. But how did you know my nickname is Nell? Well, that is the affectionate term for Eleanor, isn't it? That unnerves Julie Harris terribly. But how did you know I brought new clothes? You wear your thoughts on your sleeve. The novel that this was based on was was written by a woman named Shirley Jackson. It was this great little housewife who lived up, you know, in New England and wrote these books. Uh, her most famous was a little short story that everybody, when I was in school, read called The Lottery, which was about a town that every, once a year had a lottery, chose like a, this straw. And whoever got the short straw got stoned to death. It was never explained why. It was sort of like a ritual sacrifice the town did for, for the harvest, like they used to do make sacrifices every year. But it really is never explained. And this was one of her novels. She wrote another novel, which I really love too, called We Have Always Lived in the Castle. You know, she was just very, very mysterious. And then she wrote a series of books about her kids. One was called Raising Demons, you know, and, and, and the other one was called Life Among the Savages, you know, and about raising five kids. She had a great wit. Um, she was sort of trapped where she was. And so to get out of her circumstances and the fact that she was, she really wanted to write and she was raising kids, she wrote these books. Mel! What? What's the old man? Robert Wise, who was the director of this film, had just done West Side Story and could basically write his own ticket, whatever he wanted to make, and he chose this. <laughs> and after this one, he did The Sound of Music. He wanted to set the movie in New England, but he shot it in England. There's a wonderful British actress in it named Rosalie Crutchley. I just love Rosalie Crutchley. She plays sort of the Mrs. Danvers housekeeper. And when they first arrive, she keeps saying the same speech over them. She goes, and by the dinner down at five o'clock. I don't stay after six o'clock. I never stay once it gets dark. No one stays here in the dark. I know. In the night. In the dark. In the night. In the dark. In the night. You know, and they go, okay, I never stay here after five o'clock. She'll be talking, and you'll have these conversations. She's still going on about this. I never stay after five o'clock. In the dark. No one will come any nearer than that, in the night, in the dark. You'll be saying this for weeks. In the dark. The minute Julie Harris, it's so well directed, pulls up to the house. She's, she's thinking, you're always in her mind, she's going, I wonder what the doctor's like, I wonder who'll be here. I wonder what Hill House is like, and all of a sudden you see her. And the camera goes... <laughs> 
and there's that house. It's enormous. And she looks at it, and she looks up at it, and she goes, It's staring at me. And at the same time, you actually believe it's a real place, which is one of the reasons I love this. It isn't like a Hollywood set. You really, really feel what this house is like and that this house is a living thing. And the doctor, although he has set this whole thing up, doesn't know what he started. So he just thinks it's making her more and more hallucinogenic. Or is it? Or does it really want her? Help. Eleanor. Come home. What? And will it get her? It knows my name, doesn't it? It knows my name! <sighs> Today? No. Hello. Uh, but no. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> I know. Delicious things to eat.